Hi, welcome back to the Launch Problem Solver series. My name is Harish Gobin, and I'm the Product Development Manager here at Launch Tech. In today's episode of the series, we'll walk you through the scenario of common failures that we see on vehicles on a regular basis in our workshops and repair facilities across America. Today, we have a 2012 Toyota Corolla that has been to multiple shops with a check engine light in poor running condition. We'll be utilizing our launch diagnostic tools and resources and the latest resource, the X431 Fix by Motor Information Systems on the Throttle 3. We'll use these tools and resources to research, identify, diagnose, and repair this Toyota Corolla. Together again with ASC Master Technician, Tony Shelton from John's Automotive Care in Sadigo, California. Tony will assist us in finding a solution and stay true to our Problem Solver series by launch. Thanks, Harish. Let's get started. Today we'll be using the Launch X431 Throttle 3 linked with the SmartLink VCI. Really cool tool. Use it on the daily. We're going to go ahead and pop in through the generic side here today. Uh, the information that we're going to need to get out of this car is pretty simple and straightforward. Nothing too in-depth that would require the enhanced side. Uh, plus, this site operates a little bit faster in, in most situations. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and pull the code. As you see, we have 171 system lean, and this is where the magic starts. So, we're going to go to the 431 fix, which is a uh, tab right here, right here on the tablet, and it takes you to the site where they have all the information categorized, and it'll put the search in for you. And as you see, it pulled up a match for the 171. We'll go ahead and uh, open that up. You'll see some similarities here to the other online information sources where they, you know, kind of compile the manufacturer's data and the TSBs and, and releases like that. But what sets this apart from the rest is that it's right there at your fingertips. It's, it's in the scan tool that you're already holding. So you don't even need to get out of the front seat of the car. So starting here with the code charts, reference charts. We see 171, the airfield ratio is considerably in error. Uh, it's a two-trip code, so it will have to set twice in order to turn the light on. There's the possible causes list on the right, which we will go through here shortly. There is a brief description of the monitor, so what it's looking for and when. It can be helpful, very, very helpful at times. The monitor strategy, which is along the lines of the same thing. Let's get into the data stream here now. Uh, we're going to go and pull up just a couple of the basic PIDs uh, to get a general idea of where this car sits and what direction we may need to go. Just grab the good old trusty short-term fuel trim and some airflow. And right off the bat, it doesn't, it doesn't take rocket scientists to see that our fuel trim is way too high, adding way too much fuel. We want to see that down around zero, uh, plus or minus a couple percent maybe, you know, depending on the age of the car and other factors. But in this case, we know why it's set in the code now. It's just a matter of finding out what it is. So we'll, uh, we'll move on to that here in just a second. We'll go ahead and show it to you in, at uh, higher RPM. What you saw earlier was uh, more of an idle. So I brought the RPM in here to give you an idea that it's, it's pretty much across the board. And knowing that is helpful in determining what the cause might actually be because it, leaning out, whether it's under load or under idle conditions, does make a difference in, in which, you, uh, which path you take. So today's testing will start out with the old-fashioned smoke machine. Today we'll be using it to look for vacuum leaks, but this is a very versatile tool and it can be used for looking in leaks in other systems as well. Here we go. We're under the hood and we're going to start on the list. So intake system, that includes the PCV, valve hoses, connections, that kind of stuff. Here's your fresh air for the PCV connected to your intake duct. Runs down here. Uh, injector blockage. Eh. It's never that, but you have your cylinder one, two, three, four, right here. Mass airflow meter, 
let's take a look at that so this is with the sensors it's similar like this you've got a hot wire and then you've got a resistance wire and the difference between those two is you know used to, to calculate the voltage so let's take this one out because they're usually pretty easy to do a visual inspection on and since this one's on top we're going to go ahead and just pull it out take a look at it sometimes it's very obvious there can be a bug stuck in there sometimes it's a really thin layer of buildup in there from uh, soot on the road tire ash uh, there's a multitude of things that get caught in there so this is similar to the one i showed you earlier in the picture uh, these are the baffles that kind of route the air around it so the air comes in through past the filter and it flows out here by coming in the front like that this one looks okay though so we're going to go ahead and put it back in i know it's hard to tell from here but it's right side here is the, the uh, temperature sensor let's move on to coolant temp can definitely cause it to run lean but we're doing pretty good here we're about 201 so let's look at fuel pressure we are going to tap into the fuel line here on the back of the cylinder head and get our gauge reading. And our gauge reading looks pretty good. It's within spec. It's right there at about 42 PSI and the spec is 45. So not bad. It'll go up and down with the engine's RPM. Next, we're gonna look at injector blockage and they can get blocked right up here in the middle, right there where the valve spring is. And it turns out that's what's wrong with this one. We, we pulled these out and took a look at them and we could see a lot of buildup inside the inlet filter. Put some new ones in there and now look at our readings. Not too bad, huh? Our lambda's looking pretty good there. We're almost at stoichiometric ratio, which would be 1.0 would be the optimal number to be at. Uh, it's gonna fluctuate a little bit as it goes uh you know just based on other f f factors that are influencing it but uh we're looking pretty good here looking good so i'm very confident in this repair here that all is going to go well and our fuel trims will come back to where they're going to be so i'm going to pack everything up here in the shop go for a test drive and see how it goes thanks guys after performing all the necessary diagnostic tests and check and using our launch x431 throttle 3 and X431 fix, we were able to successfully repair the Toyota Corolla. The issue was clogged injectors. As you can see, our approach with Tony was methodical, accurate, and efficient. We look forward to seeing you next time on a future launch problem solver series with another issue that we're facing and seeing in our shops across America. For more information, visit www.launchtechusa.com.